Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. We had the first cool night last night going down to two degrees above freezing. So I brought all my tropical trees into the plant room or into the greenhouse. My greenhouse was quite full already, but I did manage to fit my yucca forest in down on the floor here. So most of them went into the plant room. Here's a look at the plant room and it's kind of a preview for the winter because I can see how many trees I have to fit in here and how little space I have. So I do have the downstairs, the basement, that I can keep trees down there also. But I think it's going to be a very, very tight squeeze. A lot of these ficus have grown giant canopies on them and they take up a lot of bench space. They also block a lot of light getting to the back of the room from the window. So it'll be interesting, I'm hoping after I get the greenhouse done, I can continue work on the plant room, getting lights put up, some shelves, finishing walls. We'll see how it goes. It all depends on the weather. I try and leave my tropical trees outside as long as possible. I leave them out until there's a danger of frost, and then I bring them in. There are a few tropicals, like my kapok trees, that I bring in sooner because they can't take the cool temperatures. But most of them go right until there's a chance of frost. That keeps them insect-free, they seem happy outside. When you start bringing the plants inside, then all your problems begin. You've got lower light, the insects multiply, it's crowded, it's hard to prune them and that. And yeah, so that's why I leave them outside as long as possible. Last night was the only cool night in the forecast. So today I'll bring all the tropicals back out on the benches and they'll hopefully stay out for another couple of weeks. Last night when I was bringing in my trees, I remember thinking, I haven't seen my Dracaena. I don't remember bringing it in. So I looked around, I couldn't find it anywhere. So I looked and it had blown off the bench down here and dumped a lot of its soil out, but it was still in the pot. It was still looking okay. I can see there's some grass in it here, but it looks okay. It uh, survived the ordeal. The pod is still in one piece, which is amazing. So that was good. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how long it had been there. Probably since that windy day, like maybe a week, maybe two weeks ago. There's a giant crane in the neighborhood. I think it's lifting out a hot tub. I've got just one more tree to bring out my ponytail palm. That was hard work but it's all done now. The room is all empty now, except for the kapok trees. I've learned after killing them for two years in a row that they can't take any lower than about 10 degrees Celsius. So they're in here where it'll be warm. I'll be working on the greenhouse today, but first I've got a bit of mail. I'm going to start the mail off with some gifts from Tom from the YouTube channel, Grow and Clip Bonsai for Seniors. He sent me a submersible pump so I'm thinking of using this in the new greenhouse and I'll have a tank of water and some piping with some sprinkler heads in the ceiling and it'll be used for misting the trees in there because I think in the new greenhouse I'll have a lot of the ficus and uh, trees that grow aerial roots. So a misting system, an overhead misting system would be fantastic. I can just turn the sump pump on. It'll mist all the trees in the greenhouse and keep them nice and humid so they'll grow aerial roots. Tom also sent me a really cool pot. I'll show you that. So here's the pot. It's <laughs> kind of looks like a natural log. It's got really cool feet, drainage hole in the bottom. So really cool. I think something like a fern would look really good in here or yeah, I, I was thinking more of a as an accent plant, but maybe a bonsai too. I don't know, a hemlock or something would suit this. So really cool. I really like the pot. It's really, really a cool design. So thanks, Tom. That's just awesome. Tom also sent me a box of goodies. He sent me some Kyoto moss spores so I can try growing my own Kyoto moss, which will be pretty cool. I think that'll go well. 
They sent me a box of products from Extreme Gardening. Um, this this is a sample package you can get of all their all their products like uh, tea brews for you know fertilizing, uh, micro root packs, micro rhiza fungi. Uh, what else? Root booster, foliar booster. Wow. <laughs> and pure mycorrhiza. So, yeah, all kinds of cool products from Extreme Gardening. So, thanks, Tom. That's wonderful. Yeah, I even got a sticker from Extreme Gardening. I could stick that in the truck. That'd be cool. In the truck here, I stick all my cool stickers down on the tunnel down here. Kind of cool. So I'll put the extreme gardening one down there too. There we go. It is in place. <laughs> Tom also sent me a back scratcher, which works well as a root rake. It's quite nice, a metal one. And he sent me some rose seeds. So that's pretty cool. So thanks a lot, Tom. I really appreciate it. Wonderful to get gifts in the mail. Eh? It makes my day. The next person who sent me some gifts is Mitchell. And he sent me a whole bunch of Portulacaria afra not cuttings, but actual plants, bare-rooted. So let's have a look at those. Here's a look at the Portulacaria afro trees. Mitchell says there's five different varieties. Most are kaleidoscope, which is pink with variegated leaves. Then there's some regular variegated, and then a nanny uh, variegated with large light green leaves, and a variegated minima called Lilliput. I guess after Gulliver's Travels, which has super tiny leaves. And there's also some cork bark cuttings. So quite a variety of Portulacaria afra. So thanks, Mitchell. That is awesome. I'll get those planted today. Mitchell made some really cool Portulacaria afra forest. I'll show you some pictures of those. <laughs> In the box too, he sent me this really cool bonsai pot. Really nice color, it's almost like a copper color. Really nice. And a large root maker pot that you have to, this is the bottom of it. And then you just wrap it around like that and you hold it in place with ties. So it makes a, a really nice kind of air pot. So cool. So thanks very much, Mitchell. I think that's just awesome. I'm going to plant the Portulacaria afras now and I've got this nice clay pot that I can put them in. I'm going to plant them all together for now and then in the future I may separate them as individual trees. I'm going to put all the trees out on the table here just so I can see what's in here. So there, there's a cutting. There's a tree with roots. That way I can kind of grade them by size, color, species. There's a lot in here. I may have to use several pots. I don't know. Maybe that won't happen. Look how bright these are. Wow. All the leaves have fallen off, I guess, in the mail, but yeah, they're pretty interesting. It's cool to have different varieties of these Portulacaria aphoris. So I'll put all these, I'll, you know, put them by species, I think, if I can figure out what's what. These look like the really little leaf ones. These are definitely the ones with the pink. So we'll put all those over here. Yeah, I don't know how long these have been in the mail, but they are hurting a little bit. These might be the cork bark ones, the cuttings. Here's more of the pink ones. More cuttings. They go over here. Oh, there's another cutting here. And that's about it. There's a few broken up pieces that I don't think will do anything. So that's compost. So that's it. That's all the trees. I think I'll just plant the ones with the pink stems in this large clay pot. So that'll go in there. I'll put maybe these really tiny leaved ones 
in the pot that Mitchell sent me. That would look good. And then I'll have to find a few more pots for the other cuttings. I've got a good assortment of pots here that I can put the Portulacaria aphras in. So I'll get planting now. I've got a base layer of soil in the large pot. So now I've got to arrange the trees. Here's a look at the root system on the trees. And you know, it's not too bad. I don't want to prune the roots until I've got some leaves up top. So I want them to regain their health. And then I'll, with the next repotting, I'll do some root pruning in that. But for now, I'm just going to plant them as is because I got to get them to live. I think I'll plant them in a clump style. You can see how this trunk is kind of bending outwards so I can match all the outward bends so they're all kind of fanning out. I think that'll look really nice. So I'll arrange them. Oh, they're kind of falling apart, some of them. There. I think something like that is going to look really nice. I think it'll really show off the colors of the trunk. And I think having them like a clump like that is just going to make the base look really awesome someday. So that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll just plant them in the, just slightly offset in the pot and I think it'll be perfect. I hope they recover because they're, they're really quite nice looking. Okay, so I'll try and kind of spread the roots out and I think that'll be the back. I'll have the thicker trunks towards the front, sort of like that maybe. And I'll just offset it very slightly in the pot to maybe be about there. So I'll start filling it in. I've always wanted to do a clump style with a Portulacaria Afra. I think they'll look really cool. Especially these ones with these fancy colored stems on them. Okay, that's sort of staying up. Now I do need some more soil. So I'm hoping these stay up. Oh, there's something else just broke off it. They're very brittle. Okay, I'll get some more soil. And I'll pile the soil up a little high for now. I can always rake it away later, exposing the roots a bit more. But for now, the goal is just to get the trees healthy and to survive. Or I guess the opposite, or survive and then get healthy. Okay, so I think, I think that's going to do it. There's my clump. It seems to be staying together nicely. I could add just a little more soil. Here's a look at the clump style now. I think it'll look really, really nice if it lives. I, uh, I hope they do. I'll keep my fingers crossed. I'll put it in the greenhouse. I won't water it yet. I'll just kind of let it stabilize, then maybe start misting it. And then eventually when it starts getting some leaves, I'll start watering it. So good luck, little trees. Next, I'll plant the little leaf ones in Mitchell's pot here. So I'll put a base layer of soil Drainage screen. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to have to trim some off the top of these because they're very top heavy. So I'll come in and I'll just prune it here, like that. And this one I'll prune about here, keeping a little bit of the branching. Now this one I'll also kind of plant as a, a group. So I'm going to use my cuttings, so I'll Remove the lower leaves off the cutting. Oh, I just, let me try that again. I just ripped it off. I should have cut it. Let me cut that. Oh, that'll be okay. Cut the lower leaves off the cutting. And then I'll add that to the group. Like that. And then I've got another cutting here. So these have, goes that guy on the motorcycle. So these have really tiny leaves. So they'll be just really nice for a little tiny bonsai. It'll be pretty cool to have. 
So I'll try and kind of arrange the roots a bit. Sort of like that. And again, sort of a clump style. Like that. If you get the trees to live, then you've got cuttings forever. So I can always, you know, plant some as single specimens, some as clump style. Try different things with them. So I changed my mind about the other ones. I put them in the direct sun for today, just while it's warm, and then at nighttime I'll bring them into the greenhouse. Now, is that gonna stay upright? Maybe, maybe not. Let me get a rock or something to put, to put beside the trees to hold them up. Whoa, they're kind of splaying out. Yeah, I'll get some rocks. Okay, I've got a nice little selection of rocks here. Kind of place them around the trees and that'll hold them up until the roots get established. Just like that, that's perfect. Okay, that's another one planted. Now this one has leaves so I am going to give it just a little bit of water. Okay, here goes just a little bit of water. Eh, just like that, that should do. Cuttings are tricky. Uh, too much water, it, they'll rot away. Too little water, then they'll wither up and dry. So you kind of got to get the moisture level in the soil just right. And it changes, you know, as they start to grow roots, you can start giving them more water. Okay, so that's the little tiny leaf ones planted. Next, I have the ones with the light green leaves. So I'll plant those. I notice they start off quite skinny and then they thicken up as it gets taller. I've never seen that on a Portulacaria afro before. So yeah, I'll, I'll get these planted and I think I'll plant them in this pot. These trees will also require some trimming as they're very top heavy. So I'm going to take them off here. And here. And here. So there's one little tree. And then the other one Take it off here, keeping you know some of the new branches forming there, here, and back to here, like that. So there's another little tree. So again, I won't do any root pruning. I'll just get them right in the pot, get them healthy, and then the next repotting, I'll tackle the roots. Okay, so the main two trees, I'm just trying to arrange them I think something like, yeah, I don't know. Something like that, it looks pretty good. So I'll put those in the pot first, trying to spread out the roots like that. And then this one, I'll spread out the roots. Oops, if I can, this is gonna be hard to hold them in place and get them potted up at the same time, but we'll try. Okay, that's not bad there. So now I'm holding them. I can start filling them in with soil. I'll plant the cuttings too, once I've got these in place, the main trees. And we can kind of put the cuttings around them, and see if they survive. Hopefully they will. Okay, I gotta get some more soil. Um, Not sure I can hold them in place with these or not, but uh, sort of. Okay, let's get these trees planted. Good thing I had lots of soil on hand. Okay, are the trees gonna stay there? Yes, they are. I'll trim off the lower leaves on the cuttings and get those planted in there too. Okay, and the last one can go back here. Let's put a little more soil in back here. I think that's good, and also give these a slight watering. 
just kind of like that. And I'll get them in the sun. Next, I have the variegated ones with the tiny leaves. So again, I'll have to do some pruning on these. They're quite top heavy, so I'll take the top off there. Um, take this off here, here, and ah, right here. So that makes a compact little tree. And the other one, I will also prune back here. This is kind of broken here, so I'll take it off anyway. Here and here. So there's that little one. So I'll get these planted. Again, I'll try and spread out the roots. Get a base layer of soil in here. Like that, and then get the two large trees planted. That one and this one kind of spreads out that direction, so. Like that, I think. So next time I repot these, it'll be, if they live, it'll be midsummer. So I'll do it when it's really hot out and sunny and they should do quite well. I can root prune them, getting kind of that flat radial root system underway. Or, you know, it's even possible to cut the root system off entirely and just start them over as cuttings. I've seen people do that and it's a little bit riskier, but it can be successful. If you're just not happy with the root system at all, you can start all over. Okay, so those are planted. Now I've got to plant all the cuttings. So here's a cutting that has a Y shape and that's usually not very attractive. So what I do is I prune off the Y, keep it like that. Plant into that cutting. So once you get a Portulacaria afra started, you have no shortage of cuttings because every time you prune them, you get lots of cuttings. So it's kind of nice. You'll never run out of trees. If you want to make your forest larger, you just keep expanding it with cuttings. You will get to a point where you have way more cuttings than you'll ever need, and you'll eventually maybe have to start giving them away or just composting them if no one wants them. But I think, you know, these interesting species like this, I think there's always someone who will take them. The regular Portula caryophora maybe not, but when you get these cool, cool varieties, I think that's really cool. I think people will go for them. Okay, so I'll give that some water now and then get it in the sun. Just a little bit. I think that's good there. That leaves me with the cork bark cuttings. And it's amazing how good a shape these are in compared to some of the others. So I don't know if it's that they're cuttings or if they're just a stronger, stronger to begin with. I don't know, but uh, yeah, they sure look good and healthy. So I'll plant these up in a pot. Okay, that's pretty good there. So now, again, I have to trim the lower leaves off the cuttings. I don't know what would happen if you planted the cuttings without doing this, but uh, I would think the leaves would just rot away and you might get some problems. I don't know. So I'll be sticking the cuttings in fairly deep. So there's the first one. I'll put it in right here. So I have a good feeling about these. I think they're going to survive these cuttings. They look in really good shape. They look good and healthy. They're nice and firm. The other ones look a little sad. Okay, and a little bit of water for those. A little more on these because they're nice and healthy looking. Okay, and into the sun they go. Here's a look at all the new plants that Mitchell sent me, all planted in the sun, ready to grow. Yeah, so that's awesome. Some nice varieties of Portula Afra, just wonderful. So hopefully they'll do well, we'll see. 
in a future update. I'm in the greenhouse now and I'll just give you an update on the Frank Yi cork bark portulacaria cuttings. So that pot is looking really, really good. There's uh, two that may not make it, but all the rest did. That one looks really good and the other pot is looking really healthy too. This may be one at the back that's not looking so good, but uh, maybe two here. But generally, I've got lots that survive, so that's really nice to have those on hand. It's time now to get back to work on the greenhouse, installing more panes of glass. So here I go. I've got three of the five panes that I need to finish the roof cleaned and washed. So I've got two more to go. I'll keep at it. I've got the roof on this side all cleaned and it's got the putty in place. So we're ready to put in the windows. Julian and I finished putting the roof in. So now it kind of looks like a bus shelter. So if it rains, I can come under here and if we get frost, a light frost, I can put the trees under here instead of bringing them in the plant room. It'll protect it from frost. So it's pretty hot up at the peak. The vents are open, you can see, and it's pretty hot working up there. So the next step, I'm going to put the glass in the front and then I can put the doors on and then I'll go around the sides and finish all that up, the sides and the back. So lots of fun. Lots of fun. I've got the two triangle windows in up top here near the peak and that will be it for the greenhouse today. Uh, I still have to water all my trees tonight and the sun is kind of setting so I better get to it. Well that was a fun day of bonsai starting in the morning right till sunset. I've got all my trees watered now and that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the bonsai zone. Thank you.